Yeah, first I want to apologize to the family of Josias. That really touches me. That like, and it's so painful to hear like these kind of stories because we hear them way too often. To be honest, the fact that there's so many different families and so many different community members having to constantly come and tell us that their families are being destroyed and ripped apart by the police is disgusting, and it's something that is it's so real. And that's really why I wanted to come and speak with my friend Rafael. Told me to come speak out here because of I do come from a privileged standpoint right now. I'm from, I'm a student at UC Berkeley. You feel me? I have access that a lot of people in the community don't have. And that's just a reality of the situation. Sometimes that like traps us as students in a bubble where people are stuck on campus, they're stuck in their different organizations, they're stuck in their different, you know, whoever they have relations to. And that, that even sometimes spreads out into the community where you see different organizations separating themselves from each other and trying to do work, but they can't even come together because they have a different view on this certain thing or a different date on this certain thing. And that's really like, it's, Distancing the whole point of this struggle, you feel me? The whole revolution is taking a, is taking a loss from this. Honestly, like what what I come to say is, is that basically, we need to stay out of this bubble. The city where I'm from, I'm coming from. I'm, I moved from Richmond, California, to Antioch, California, right? So one city is getting gentrified. One city is the product of gentrification. Um, uh, Antioch, California, it's, it reminds me of cities like Vallejo, cities like um, Fairfield out here where the kids here are being treated differently because of they're coming from these cities that are considered hood, where they're considered to be thugs, or, or people who are coming from these cities, or you feel me, they're not looked that good. In these cities, the inner cities, the people are struggling from poverty. You feel me, we're on a lose-lose situation. We're fighting gentrification, we're fighting the police, we're fighting the system at every turn. And so, when you go to these cities, though, you don't see UC Berkeley's, you don't see Stanford's, you don't see these student organizations that are out here like we have in Berkeley. Like, you guys know Berkeley High, right? Berkeley High is right here. So we get to go over there, tutor, a bunch of students are tutoring over there. A bunch of students are talking to the kids over there. And so those kids are constantly coming over here and doing actions, which is beautiful. But the kids that are around the Bay, that are having to witness this poverty, this struggle, their friends are getting killed, their dads are getting killed, their family members are getting killed. These kids are out here sitting, not knowing what to do, but to follow the same system. They're falling into the system, and we, we aren't even here talking to them for real. These, system, these, uh, these conversations, these interactions, they aren't real to them but the police violence that they're facing is very real to them. For example, uh, now this is a story, uh, this is my friend's story, so I'm not gonna share any names or really too many details, but recently, one of my homegirls, um, her little brother, is, he's now sitting in a jail cell right now, waiting on, his, uh, waiting on a fair trial, which is just not fair, but he was falsely arrested, and the way they, they arrested him was completely disgusting. They bursted into his house in Antioch, kicked his door down, even though his mom was ready to open the door, put a gun to his little 12-year-old brother, 12 years old, seventh grader, my nigga, like seventh grader, I'm sorry about that, but he's 12 years old, you know? And like, that's ridiculous. They put a gun to his 12-year-old brother, put a gun to his whole family, basically, walk into his room when he's already surrendering. He's ready, he's saying, just arrest me. I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna do this trial or whatever. He's already surrendering and they go in there they put him in cuffs and they beat him up. They beat the stuff out of him. He's sitting in a jail cell getting beat up now even by the, by the people that are in, in the cells with him because of what the police are saying he's doing. And he doesn't even have a chance. They say they set his bail at a million dollars. He can't afford lawyers. What was it? That's my sister. She knows this, the story too. And it's, it's, it's so sad. But nobody on campus heard about this. His name's not on a poster because he's not, I mean, he wasn't killed and I feel everybody that was killed, but the reality of it is that this stuff is happening every day. The police are, he are abusing their power every day. It's, it stems from the abuse of power. They're out here not only killing, beating up on folks, scaring folks, terrorizing folks on the daily. And so, like you guys said, we need to be able to stop these, these interactions when we see them. We need to have the guts to, st to st uh, stand up and say something when we see the police talking to people, but we also need to go and really start to um, look into ourselves and, feel like, and realize what we can do for ourselves and for our community. Because as students, as workers, as you know, people from different cities, we all tend to get caught in our own bubbles. And the fact is we need to be connecting in order to really do anything, to really unite. He's talking about revolution, but how can we do it with, if the revolution's only in Berkeley? And so. <laughs> so yeah, I really don't have a lot of time. I really want to just come and tell y'all that, but I'm gonna just end with the poem that I wrote um, a little while back after we did an action on campus. 
And I love even my campus folks, but I stopped doing as many actions with them because I'm spending more time in the community. And sometimes I encourage y'all to do that if that's what you guys feel that you're the most effective at. Wherever you feel you can have the most effect at, where you can actually see longe longevity coming from what you're doing. You know, this is not something you're supposed to put on your resume. We're supposed to change the world. You feel me? All right. So it goes a little something like, Committing civil disobedience, floating with my homies on a mission like Odysseus, trying to spark a fire like my name was Prometheus, right at first Friday, so the pigs could see the shit. Trying to get a score, but the system trying to scream my shit. Mama sun shining, they try to sunscreen the kid. Don't want it shown, revolt won't be seen for shit. I'm a UV ray, letting Boosie play, FD police, the streets will judge their gang, a bullet to the brain, and my people in chains, and a rope getting hanged, so at least it's changed. Ain't that insane? The fuck that mean? I ain't got no space, where can I be? So I'll be posted at the GBC, UCB, but I'm so glad to think I'm BCC. BC <laughs> UCPD, wherever I walk, I guarantee. You see me, Black Power crew down in darker jeans. So cool when I pass, follow me. Try to dig out our souls and hollow me. We aren't hurting, ain't no mass, ain't no Halloween. <laughs> ain't no octagon stopping us until we six feet deep. So maybe I'ma listen up to Malcolm X. <laughs> Get this by any means. Or do like Fred and die for my schemes. <laughs> All I know is like King. I'm a fight for my dreams, or a piece of my brother Eric. I can't breathe. 